Hello, people. Welcome to another great show. And today we got the making of Alex Alex Cooper, billion dollar babies. Um, album. One of his um albums. This is one of his um probably one of his. I think one of his better albums. I really enjoyed this album. I thought this album yeah. was great. Yeah, I think it's probably it's probably the best of the original group. I mean, I I'm a huge fan, so it's hard for me to pick. But uh, I, I mean, as far as sales goes in the original band, this was the biggest album. So you know, I'm, I, I love this album. It's just like a, I go to it all the time. I listen to it all the time. You know, it's just like yeah. a, I mean, the sound of it, the production is great. Bob Ezrin, and uh, it's just a cool record. I mean, you know, if Alice was, it's it's kind of hard to to understand today in 2022, like how controversial Alice was 50 years ago. Yeah. Okay, you know, I mean, he was like every parent's nightmare. Okay. Your kid going to an Alice Cooper concert. That was like horrible. Uh, okay. And you know, this, this particular tour uh, behind the billion dollar babies on, we'll talk about it a little bit was one of the more like notorious rock tours of the early seventies. Uh, you know, most people remember, you know, the theatrics, and that's the thing, you know, the theatrics of Alice Cooper, uh, it really peaked with the original band with this tour. And it kind of, it kind of set them on a course to break up because the next album was called Muscle of Love, and that came out yeah. in 74. And uh, the band, besides not Cooper, but the, the, the rest of the band wanted to get away from the theatrics and make a more solid rock and roll record. Now, Muscle of Love is a great album. Uh, it's not the best out of the, you know, the, the originals, but it's still a great album. But yeah. this, this, uh, this tour, Billion Dollar Babies, they spent so much money and, and time putting it together. I mean, it's, it's got everything from, uh, you know, crazy costumes to 
you know, there's a song called Unfinished Sweet, which is about going to the dentist. Yeah, and dentist get, <laughs> Getting your teeth pulled out. And they, like when they showed this, when they did it live, they had a guy come out. You know, it was he was a magician. I'll talk about him after. He he was part of the show. And he would have like a, a drill. It was like a gigantic drill that would go in Alice's mouth and he would be cranking it for you know, and I mean it was like nuts. And Alice had the the hundreds of, of baby dolls that he was you know <laughs> killing on stage. Okay, and uh he had those big thigh high cheetah boots. Everybody remembers that if they saw them on that tour. Uh, but this album, I mean, uh, you have uh, a guest a guest appearance by Donovan. Okay, he, on the yep. on the on the title track, he does a backing vocal. Uh, and again, this was their best selling album. Okay, it went uh, went gold like in a week. Yeah, because this was it's his huge. sixth um, studio album, and it lasted yeah. forty minutes and fifty one seconds. Right, and it, it cover everything from horror to weird uh, sexual harassment. It was, yeah. it was it was like yeah. a monster. Right. Yeah. Dental fear, okay. Uh, you going ne to that necro yeah, necrophilia. You going to that, yeah, you went to the Addicts Cooper show. The devil worshippers there. That's what you people know, that thought. Was, that was the yeah, thing. yeah. I mean, and you know, of course, Alice. Uh, you know, had perfected a way of always executing himself on stage. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, and this was when the guillotine was brought out. I think they had it. I think they had it earlier for the school's out tour. I think they had it on that, but yeah. this really they perfected it. And uh, I think it was this tour. I could be wrong. It's going by memory here, but I think it was on the billion dollar babies tour that they almost had an accident where he almost, almost cut his head off oh shit with that guillotine i think it was i think it was this tour uh yeah i mean and that that guillotine is something he still uses today you know and it's it's real i mean it's a real guillotine it, it's yeah. real you know but um right. all right so yeah the sixth six studio album. album from from alice cooper and it came out february 25th 1973 and like i just said it's the best-selling album to date Okay, of the original band. Uh, it went to number one in the USA and in the UK. Um, drummer Neil Smith, he has said that the idea to make this album kind of came from going back three years earlier, two years earlier, I should say, when they were doing Love It to Death. Uh, the song Caught in a Dream was kind of the impetus for making Billion Dollar Babies. Yes. Um, <laughs> the, first, the first recording sessions took place in a mansion in Connecticut, Greenwich, Connecticut, to be particular. Uh, yep. It was called the um, the Galazi Estate. Yep. And what they did was, Bob, Bob Ezrin was very particular on getting a, a certain sound for this album. He mic'd up all the rooms in the house, okay, and including a greenhouse that was kind of a little bit off the house to get this kind of like echoey sound. And it, it really, it comes across on the album, Okay, because they recorded in different rooms and all that. You know, they didn't have a rec real recording studio in the mansion. It just was like a big mansion with a lot of echoey rooms. Okay, and that's that's what they were looking for, sound like that. Um, they also held some sessions in Morgan Studios in London. Uh, that was where Donovan, because he was from Britain, uh, that's where he did his little part in Billion Dollar Babies. Um, the album, like the prior three, was produced by Bob Ezrin, and also Jerry Lyon was considered his assistant on the uh, yeah. in the New York, Connecticut, and London studios. Um, interesting enough, just as a side note, I mean Bob Ezrin had a role of amazing records. I mean he did Cooper, right? Love yeah. It to Death, Killer, Schools Out, Billion yeah. Dollar Babies. But then in 73, he did Billion Dollar Babies, but he also did the Lou Reed Berlin album. Okay. Uh, by 76, he was working with Kiss. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, he had, a, he had a lot of other people he worked with. I mean, he really, in the 70s, he was a young, very, you know, cutting edge kind of producer. It and, was like his own version of Phil Spector, you know? 
Kind of, yeah. I mean, it was a more more hard rock version. Okay, yeah, more hard rock. Well, yeah, yeah not as hard, not as ex, not as eccentric though. Not no, as eccentric. but he also he worked with some of the best acts, and he he knew how to take hit hit albums, produce hit yeah. albums. You know, yeah, yeah, and that's what you actually want out of your producer. You know, what else right. do you need? Now, um, sadly, though, at this time, uh, lead guitarist for the band Glenn Buxton was uh, very in very bad shape. He had a, a bad drinking problem. Uh, he would get acute, or I should say, chronic um, pancreatitis attacks. Okay, from his drinking. Okay, uh, eventually he would he would he would die from. I believe liver disease and things like that in the nineties. But, uh, he really sometimes wasn't in a good position to, to be playing. So they brought in some reinforcements on guitar. Um, Buxton always used an SG guitar and, and, and yeah. rhythm guitarist Michael Bruce also used an SG. Uh, the three additional guitarists they brought in are, uh, Mike Mashbeer who had played on schools out, and yeah. Dick Wagner and Steve Hunter were brought in to assist Glenn. Um, Dick Wagner and Steve Hunter. I mean, amazing duo right there. Yeah. Uh, pretty you know, it, it would be, yeah. yeah. Dick, Dick Wagner is a guy. He's a Detroit guy. Uh, don't recall if Steve is, he might be, but, uh, but Dick Wagner is a Detroit guy. that had been around since the, you know, mid sixties, early sixties in the D Detroit scene. Uh, there was a band around 1968-69 called The Frost that he was in. And uh, everybody wanted Dick Wagner in their band. Even even Alice is on record saying that back in 69, they wanted to get Dick Wagner in Alice Cooper. Okay. Wow. So Bob Ezrin had a connection with him and, and, and Steve Hunter. And they would be, uh, you know, an amazing part of billion dollar babies uh if yes, you listen to the, you listen to the guitar work on there you know it's all wagner you could tell uh glenn of course contributed but you know you could tell wagner and oh, uh you can tell the different right away like it was like it was very different yeah yeah now wagner and hunter would um follow alice afterwards when when alice would go solo in 70 after muscle of love came out 74 75 um, and be in that original lineup with like Welcome to My Nightmare and all that. And also in 74, um, he, uh, Wagner and, and Hunter became part of Lou Reed's band. Yeah. And when, when Ezra was, was getting involved with Lou Reed with Berlin and, uh, like the Rock and Roll Animal album, the live album by Lou Reed is all got Wagner on it and, and Hunter. Okay. Great stuff. So, uh, the, you know, the, the version of Sweet Jane. That you always heard on the radio. Yeah. That's that's Sweet Dick Wagner Jane. and Steve Hunter. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic, man. Yeah, yeah. So, um, interestingly, uh, they made a quadraphonic mix of this album, okay, which was released on both eight track and reel to reel format, uh, of course, as vinyl as well. Um, and uh, you remember what quadraphonic was, okay? Yeah. Our four speakers set up front and back yep. and you would get the sound like it was a very early version of surround sound kind of yeah. thing exactly. um, pretty much what it was yeah it was kind of like a surround sound i mean i remember when i was a kid my dad had you know the quadraphonic stereo with the four speakers and when you bought um when you bought albums that were recorded in quadraphonic you could they, there was things that they could do that you couldn't hear in stereo. You know, you put the vocals up front, the guitar would be behind you, you know, things like that. And it, it was it was a cool kind of way to listen to it. Now, what they did to make it even more uh, interesting is some of the mixes on the quadraphonic mix are actually different than what you got in the stereo mix. Okay. Okay. They, they actually, like some of the vocals are slightly different. Uh, some of the uh, uh, they they like there's some tracks like uh, raped and freezing, okay, which is a great, <laughs> it's a funny song, and it's it there's like some different words on there too, different tracks in the vocals. Um, Generation landslide doesn't fade out; it's more like a stop short kind of ending. 
okay, uh, on the quadraphonic. And uh, I Love the Dead sounds a little bit different also than the uh, the, the stereo version. Um, I, I, you know, I don't recall if quadraphonic cost more. I probably did. Then, then yeah, probably to record it probably cost a few more bucks, but well, I mean, even in retail, you know, I'm just I'm trying to I don't remember if it costs more because I I wasn't buying my own records in '74, but but uh, uh, I, I, I from what I remember, I think they cost a little bit more than than the average vinyl, uh, but it was it was all part of like a new experience in listening to music. Um, now. On the quadraphonic version, Alice's vocals in general are more upfront. Okay, they're, they're kind of than they are in the stereo mix. In the stereo mix, they're upfront enough you can hear them, but there's still a lot of music up front too. Mm -hmm. Now, there's been some discussion over the years about the Billion Dollar Baby's DVD audio version that came out. Now, yeah. I have I have this. Okay, the DVD audio version. And I remember that uh, in fan circles, okay, uh, I used to be part of a, a fan club called Sick Things, which is, which is um, it was an internet club that uh, one of Alice's uh, uh, main assistants ac actually ran it, okay? Guy's name was Brian something. I, I forget his name. But he ran this website. And I remember when that audio came out, there was discussion on it, the DVD version of it. Uh, if you remember, they were making like in the like mid 2000s, you know, 2010, 2008, they were making like DVD audio 5.1 yeah. channel mixes of yeah. albums. Okay. And again, this was like very similar to Quadraphonic, but you actually had a fifth speaker, you had mm -hmm. your center speaker. Okay. I still have a setup like this. Okay. Uh, five, speakers? Well, five speakers yeah you have you know two in front two behind you and the center speaker between the two front speakers yeah. okay and um you know i have some really good polk brand speakers that that are top notch but no one gives a shit about all that anymore because everything is like you know bose radio and all that stuff but back then like 15 20 years ago oh yeah okay, people that, would go crazy over that was big that. And what people were saying, what I'm getting at is, is that the 5.1 version was actually the quadraphonic. And I was kind of excited because I had never heard that before. Wow. Okay. But it turned out it wasn't true. <laughs> it turned out it wasn't true. Okay. They never advertised it that way. It was just word was going around like, oh, yeah, that's the, the lost quadraphonic mix of Million Dollar Babies. It's not. What they did is and what they were doing the technology in general on all these albums that came out like this is they would take the stereo mix and and convert it into five channels yeah. okay so you 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 know the technology was there to do that okay at at that time so they did it but it wasn't based on the quadraphonic mix which i thought would have been cool because it had differences in it anyway yeah you know but but unfortunately that they only use the stereo mix for that. So but it still sounds great because you have the surround sound. Okay, so you still have that kind of quadro, but really five. Not quad, five. Not speak. Five. Yeah. So the album's title actually comes from the fact that all five members of Alice Cooper were very surprised about their rocket to success. Okay. I mean, if you Remember our show on Alice Cooper, if you know the history, yep. you know, they, they, they had been playing together since like 1964, 65 out in Phoenix. Okay. Where they started off as the earwigs, like a Beatles type band. Okay. And then morphed into the Naz. And then the, you know, the lineup became solid with Alice Cooper in 68. They yeah. relocated to California where they got on Frank Zappa's straight record label, straight yeah. records, okay? And, you know, there's that famous story where to audition for, for Zappa, Zappa said, okay, come over at 7 o'clock tomorrow, and I'll do give you an audition, and it would be at his house. He lived in a log cabin. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and uh, in, in, in outside of L.A. or something. 
And uh, they misunderstood and thought he meant 7 o'clock the next morning. So they showed up in their their show clothes, which was all gold lame, whacked out shit. Alice wore like a dress, okay? And uh, uh, they, 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 oh, they just went in and set up in his living room and started playing, and, and he came down with a cup of coffee and a bathrobe, like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's seven o'clock tonight, you know? And, 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 you know, where they were musically in 68 was totally different than what Billion Dollar Babies is. They oh, were yeah. really, they were really off the wall. The songs didn't make a lot of sense. A lot of people hated them. Uh, they were known to, uh, they used to play the Cheetah Club a lot in LA and, and, and a big thing was to like, go see Alice Cooper and walk out because <laughs> they were so awful, but the, they weren't. I mean, those two albums they made for, for Zapper are interesting. They're not awful. They're just interesting. They're just interesting. They're different. Yeah. 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 I mean, it totally belonged on Frank's label. I mean, Frank was out there too. Yeah. Oh. Oh. But yeah. Um, yeah. So they, they really were very, they were very surprised that in that, you know, five year period, how far they had gone. Um, they, they, Alice has said, like, how could we, this band that two years ago was living in the Chambers Brothers' basement in Watts, be the number one band in the world with people throwing money at us? Yeah. You know, I mean, Bob Ezrin was a big part in finding their sound with Love It to Death. They had two albums under their belt already, but they yeah. were kind of treading water. The albums didn't sell. And he, he is the one that really brought Alice to what he became and decided, you know, we're going to be theatrical and you're going to put on a show and all that stuff. A lot you of that. The, you know what's the funny thing about this whole thing? Not only did they become so popular, the concert, the, the touring from this from this album broke records. It actually outsold the uh, Rolling Stones. Do you yeah, at that? one point. The biggest concert ever. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think where it broke records was the the, the short time it was to sell out the tour. Yeah, okay? crazy. It, but but we'll get it. We'll we'll get into that in a little bit. But um, they also said that uh, Alice also said that the whole idea behind Billion Dollar Babies was about exploiting the idea that people have sick perversions. Okay, <laughs> and. You know, I mean, it, it, who else to do it better in 1973 than Alice Cooper? Something on that theme. Because it was always – the thing with Cooper that I think people uh, – parents, I think kids got it. But parents at the time, it was very tongue-in-cheek, okay? <laughs> it wasn't like, you know, they went up st on stage and was cursing and, do you know, there was no, like, satanic – images none of that stuff there was it was just kind of like a lot of symbolism in what he was doing uh yeah, that's well. and some people didn't get it and uh the fact that i mean but the, the the songs were great people couldn't deny that you know and and uh it just was the live show that used to freak out parents so yeah. much you know now alice wrote the majority of the album's lyrics yeah, uh, a lot of songs uh, well, the lyrics mostly, and and he cited uh, Chuck Berry as his biggest influence in songwriting. Um, the song "Hello Hooray," which opens the album, okay, fantastic it, it, song. Yeah, it was actually done originally by Judy Collins, who was like a you know female vocalist of uh, yeah. the time, uh, and she was Canadian, and it was written by uh, no, I'm sorry, she was a Canadian, but the songwriter Rolf Kempf, the guy who wrote it. He was Canadian. Uh, the band wanted that. If you listen to that song, it's almost like a cabaret song. Yeah. Okay. And cabaret was was popular at the time. The, the film, I yeah. believe, it was a Broadway show, right? And uh, I, uh, you know, they wanted to kind of mix Alice Cooper with cabaret music, and they can't. It comes across very well. It's a, it's an interesting track. They, it's very different. From anything they had ever done before um the album's third track was called elected and uh that was a reworking of a song called reflected which yeah. was on their first album pretties for you uh, 
produced by Frank Zappa. Um, Raped and Freezing is yeah. a is a hilarious take on the idea of being like sexually harassed by a female. Okay. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, he's talking about like, you know, being lost in Mexico and like, get, you know, raped and freezing, you know, it's crazy. And uh, <laughs> then um, unfinished suite. We mentioned it before. It's about yeah. going to the dentist and being scared of the dentist. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, it, it included like, you know, this funny sound effects at the end, like he's getting his teeth pulled and uh, you hear it, horrible. you hear it like pop at the end, pop. Uh, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You that's the end. That album, you cringe. You're like, oh. Yep. 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 And that was all Jerry Lyons, uh, Ezrin's uh, assistant that came up with those effects. Now the title track was actually co-written by a guy named Reggie Vincent who played guitar and did vocals also on Schools Out and the album before that was in 1972. Uh, so they, you know, they had a lot of input from different sources with this album. Um, Donovan, who describes the billion dollar babies song as a horror story song. He contributes, <laughs> uh, he contributes his backing vocals to that. Okay. He sings one, he sings like one section of the verses. Yeah. Um, and then the closing track is a song called I Love the Dead. Yeah. Which is all about necrophilia. <laughs> okay. So, and that was, you know, all those songs I just mentioned, like, you know, Unfinished Sweet was done theatrically, you know, with the big drill in his mouth. Yeah. And, then, and then I Love the Dead would always be uh, incorporated. And, still, and Alice still does it today. He kind of incorporates it into the scene where he gets decapitated by the guillotine. <laughs> All right. What what usually happens, even shows today, and I've seen Alice somewhere between fifteen and twenty times. Wow. Um, yeah, he 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 puts on a great show to this day. And uh, last time I saw him was in twenty eighteen. He was amazing. Um, he 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 will you know be brought and, and the thing you know the thing with Alice Cooper is is he's a rock and roll villain. That was the that was the whole idea, yes, but there's there's a, there's a moral lesson in every show because at every show, he may whip the girls on stage or you know he's acting like a bad guy, and then he always gets it in the end. Okay, so yeah. you get you know in this case it's the guillotine. Sometimes they've used the electric chair. Sometimes yeah. in the Killers tour, uh, Killer tour in 1971, he was actually hung on stage. Uh, which was, the, if you look at the inside cover of Killers, it's it's him hanging with a noose around his neck, and uh, which was controversial. You know, nobody was doing anything like that. But uh, with "I Love the Dead," he would get his head cut off, and then the the executioner would take the head out of the basket, and looks just like his head. Okay, and blood would be dripping off it, and you would start hearing "I Love the Dead," you know, and like. Sometimes Alice would come out even after and have his own head <laughs> looking at it and everything, you know, That's totally, totally, nuts. totally nuts. Yeah. So um, after the album was released, the band embarked on the tour. OK, and it broke all U.S. box office records previously held by the Stones, like you said. And it included 64 concerts in 59 cities in That's 90 crazy. days. Yeah. Okay. So again, crazy touring schedule for for ninety days for three months. The gross revenue of the tour, however, it it it, it did very well. But I think they anticipated something like twenty million dollars they would make. Well, it didn't happen that way. They made about four million, but still, that's a lot of money for nineteen seventy three. You know. That's a lot of money. A lot of money. Okay. Now, but but Cooper, and again, I, I want I want to I'll talk a little bit more about the theatrics and what went into it. But Cooper hired magician James Randy to design the effects for the show. Uh, he traveled with them and would coordinate and supervise the effects. Um, and he also was an executioner. Okay, at uh, a lot of Alice's 
at, at, at all the shows where Alice would get killed by the guillotine. He was the one pulling it. I misspoke earlier and said he was the dentist. He wasn't the dentist. They had another old man for that. Um, if you ever have a chance to just Google this stuff and YouTube it and look at look the clips of that tour, it's crazy. It's totally crazy. Now, now they, they spent a lot of money. See, I think this tour, what I was saying, how it, it contributed to the band breaking up, is they made a lot of money, but a lot of money went back into the show. Mm -hmm. And I think that the guys were getting tired of that. Okay, uh, things that I've read over the years, you know, it was just like, let's just make a record and tour it and not have to wear all these costumes and all these onstage antics. And I think it was what was happening was it was becoming obvious that the attention was really just on Alice and not the band. And that that, you know, because there's always that that gray line where it's like, okay, is Alice Cooper a band or is he a person? Okay, and eventually, you know, Vincent Fernier, who was Alice's real name, would leave and change his name to Alice Cooper. They worked that out with lawyers and whatnot. I think they still get paid a certain amount of what Alice gets. Okay, but you know, this this tour was was very, you know, I mean, the live shows feature, feature Cooper wearing a costume with fake blood stains at the crotch. Okay. okay, and tearing he would tear apart baby dolls, attack mannequins, and being decapitated with the guillotine. Now Cooper has said that the mutilation of the baby dolls symbolized child neglect. Okay, uh, the song "Dead Babies" from the Killer album is is often cited as like a you know a sick song oh how can you listen to it the song is about child abuse okay it's really about like parents being irresponsible and you know leaving shit around the house for babies to get into like the yeah. medicine cabinet okay and uh you know there's the line you know the baby just ate a pound of aspirin or something like that okay so you know it's it's really that's what it's about and but yeah you know, the baby dolls being mutilated on stage was considered shocking. Um, he hired like 40 to 50 people to deal with 26,000 pounds of equipment right. that was right. used in the show. Right. Okay, so he had a lot of sets, a lot of equipment. Um, they had uh, props, okay, that, that were, were included like uh, the giant dentist drill, four whips, a surgical table, six hatchets, 33,000 program books, 300 baby dolls, 22,000 sparklers, 58 <laughs> mannequins, 280 spare light bulbs just in case, 1,000 patches. I think he used to throw patches out into the audience. 6,000 6, mirror parts because they had yeah. like a light show with mirrors bouncing around. 14 bubble machines, 28 gallons of bubble juice, and 250,000 packages of bubble bath. <laughs> yes, they would, a lot of times, I believe, during school's out, they would just launch the bubble machine. He still does that. Okay. That and uh, you just get, you get hit with, you get hit in the audience with bubbles, and then they drop like all these giant balloons from the ceiling on everybody. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. So, uh, Billion Dollar Babies was was commercially more successful than any of the previous albums. Uh, it went to number one in the U.S. and the U.K. The singles were Elected, Hello Hooray, Billion Dollar Babies, and, of course, No More Mr. Nice Guy. Can't leave that no out. No More Mr. Nice Guy. Right? That's a great song. Right? Yeah. They were all huge, you know, top 40 hits. Um, yeah. In March of 73... A month after being released, it was certified gold. Wow. And it took another 13 years, but in 1986, it went platinum. Okay. And it still sells today. Um, Great album, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, one thing I got to point out is the, you know, Alice Cooper was very influential in general to what would be the punk scene coming up very soon. Okay. Uh, but Billion Dollar Babies 
um, really kind of like made a lot of bands. Uh, it just influenced so many people that came out like two, three years later, like the Ramones, the Sex Pistols, the Dead Boys were all huge Alice Cooper fans. Um, many people cite Billion Dollar Babies as the original band's best album. Uh, yeah. David David Byrne from the Talking Heads was inspired by that album to write Psycho Killer. Okay. So, you know, it's just one of these things like, you know, you plant that seed and it grows. And you know, you release an album like world. that, and it, 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 it affects so many people that are up and coming. You know, people were really blown away by the record. Now, most people who remember that tour in 1973 remember Alice's thigh-high cheetah boots. <laughs> okay. I've met people over the years that were like, I can't remember anything about the show except those boots. <laughs> <laughs> and th those boots, I believe, are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I believe. Wow. Yeah. So uh, um, to this day, you know, Alice plays the title track, Billion Dollar Babies, at every show. I don't think I've ever not heard him do that song. Okay. Um, the only song from the album that's never been played live is this weird little track, second to last on side two, called Mary Ann. Um, Mary Ann is, is like a piano song. Okay. He just kind of sings. I don't know what it's about other than like Marianne might be a guy. Okay. It's like kind of like gender bending a little bit. That's the impression I get out of it. I could be wrong, uh, but it's a weird little track. Oh, I, I, it's not really filler. I wouldn't quite call it filler. It's not bad, but no. it's just kind of like, it's something that they, they threw in there for effect and it works. It's just yeah. a weird little track before you get into I love the dead. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's just there. Let's put this here and put it yeah. there. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> now, the other, the other song, of course, is "Sick Things." Okay, which was this was the track that he would come out with the snake. Okay, on stage, and he would, you know, the snake would be, and he still does this sometimes. He always has the snake. It isn't always for sick things, but on this tour, it was for sick things, and he. The snake is crawling all over him. There's a big boa constrictor, you yeah. know. Yeah. I think, uh, I don't know if it was this tour, but there was a tour. Might have been an earlier tour because he used the snake before where the snake got lost in the hotel, got out. <laughs> okay. And I think they I think they never found it. I think they, it was gone. It was somebody, got, somebody thought it, somebody thought it went down a toilet and it was going to pop up in someone's toilet, but it, it, <laughs> it never, they never found it. Um, and again, just you know, like I mentioned earlier, "Sick Things" was also the name of the Alice Cooper fan club uh, yeah. that I was in for a while. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for you, Rob. Billion Dollar Pretty Babies. Pretty good show, Mike. Uh, iconic album, probably one of his best song commercial yeah. success. Yeah. If you don't have this record, if you if you're watching this show and you don't have this record, don't be an embarrassment. Go on Amazon right now and buy the fucking thing. <laughs> right? You have to have this record in your collection. Yeah, it's a great, <laughs> don't embarrass it's a great yourself. Great fucking record. Great record. Yeah, definitely. definitely. So, Mike, how can we uh, find you? Okay, I'm all over the place. Instagram, Rocker Mike two one two. I am on Twitter, Rocker Mike two one two. Uh, I am on Getter under Rocker Mike. I am on Truth Social under Rocker Mike. I am on MeWe and Clout Hub under Rocker Mike. Facebook, for some reason, I have to be Rocco Mike because they suck dick. And <laughs> if you look for the, if you're on Facebook, uh, Rock Show Podcast Group page, where you'll see this show and all the other 157 shows that we did. Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, every day we have a song of the day, lumped up song of the night, uh, little bits during the day. People contribute a lot to it now. It's done yeah. very well. I've been increasing in the in the in the numbers. Yeah. Okay. They, they for some reason Facebook for like a year kept me at the same number, and I knew people were joining. I just don't yeah. understand how they figure that. But then recently I saw it go up a little bit, so maybe they had no yeah. choice. Yeah, it's you know, good. How about it's you, Rob? Where can I find you? 
You can find me on Instagram, at Twitter, at Facebook, at Getting Lumped Up. You look up Getting Lumped Up and you see all my social handles. Just go on Google and um, click Getting Lumped Up and, uh, and all my social handles will come up and links to the show, links to the uh, website and everything else. And I uh, got thank you people again for the great support. The show's moving on and um, Mike is putting a hell of a list of more shows on coming up, but we got a lot more stuff coming up for the rest of the year. And remember, the rock show comes on every two weeks. We have a, a brand new rock show with the new I'm going to come up with a new uh, schedule soon. Yeah, and we're moving the uh, conspiracy show for trying to we'll probably move to Rumble or another platform. But I'm looking for a new platform to cover the conspiracy yeah. for 20. We'll let, we'll let everybody know about that. Uh, we yep. mentioned that in the last rock show, too. So hopefully by the time this is up, uh, this is June schedule. So hopefully by the time this is up, we'll have a Rumble channel, and yep. we'll tell you more about that. Yep. So people, remember, don't get drunk. Get lumped up. See you next time. Take care, people.